Hello, my name is Nick Leblanc, a recent graduate of the University of New Brunswick. I made the most of my time in school by going on all sorts of international experiences. My name is Alex Bizeau, and I'm a member of the International Development Association, as well as the International Development Studies Program at UNB. If you're on the verge of an international experience, you're about to embark on something that is going to be not only very exciting, but also probably rife with a lot of challenges and opportunities. This video is designed to help you make the most of that experience. When you're abroad, it's really great if you can record your experiences through one means or another. It might be a great way of unleashing your creative side. Some great ways to record your experiences might be, you know, keeping a notebook, or maybe even doing a digital journal where you store that all on the computer. Uh, another great thing, of course, is blogging, feeding from that digital journal idea. You can share that with people all over the world and they can forward it on. And of course, photography or video, if you can record those experiences that way, that's fantastic. And keep in mind, too, if you're abroad doing, let's say, an internship for teaching, it's awesome if you can get pictures of you in the classroom or videos of you teaching. Because these are things that you can use later on when you're applying for a job or trying to assemble a portfolio. You can actually have examples. You can not only say, I went abroad and I did it here. You can show them, this is what I did and this is how it went. Before you set out, when you were making your work plan, you identified outcomes. You said, these are skills, this is experience, this is knowledge that I want to acquire. Then you went out, you took the initiative, and you got those things. So being a member of the International Development Association and being in the International Development Studies program at UMB makes me want to gain some tangible, hands-on experience abroad. And this is why I'm planning my trip to Ecuador this summer. My three goals are, of course, to brush up on my Spanish, to gain that hands-on experience in human rights, and to apply for grad school. So the work plan should include six very important components. Timeline, goals, activities, milestones, evaluation, and status. The first step is to set your overall goals. SMART Goals is a well-known template that will help you figure out how to systematically develop your achievable goals. SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Bound. A set timeline is key to developing your work plan. Milestones, of course, will give you that ability to change your program on the fly. So if you notice it's not working or not going in the direction you want, by having those milestones in place, you will be able to adapt to changing circumstances. You must be able to evaluate your progress on a regular basis. This enables you to change your work plan in order to meet your goals. The trick is to stop every month or so and step back and evaluate what you've done and what you've accomplished. Are you accomplishing what you thought? Are you achieving your goals? Do you need to review your milestones? Can you actually accomplish what you want in this set time period? Are your expectations real or do they need to be adjusted? So evaluating will allow you to keep abreast on the status of your program. Do some of your specific goals remain a priority to you? By determining the status of your specific goals, you will be able to judge whether or not you want to continue on that path. Have you accomplished your specific goals or do you still need to work on it? If more work is required, continue the next month. If you've achieved those goals, you can set new goals. and now you're back home and you want to be able to share those not just personally with your friends through anecdotes but professionally. Employers don't just want to hear about your trip they want to know how the experience that you gained is going to benefit their organization. So you need to be able to articulate how those skills, that knowledge and that experience is going to help you succeed in their workplace. The STAR technique provides a framework for telling your story. STAR is an acronym the S stands for situation. Briefly list the facts to give your story context. Who were you with? Where were you? What were you doing? The T stands for task. Highlight some of the challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. The A stands for action. How did you do it? What were some of the soft skills or the interpersonal skills that were key in helping you to overcome your challenges? And finally the R stands for result. Why did you do it? 
Do you have any hard evidence that can show that what you did was a success? Now make sure that you can also provide tangible evidence for your work while you're abroad. This could include academic transcripts and grades, maybe professional references and letters that people have written for you from your workplace when you were away, publications, articles, or professional designations, maybe products from what you did when you were away. For example, when I was in Malawi, I developed a degree program, and so when I brought that back, I could say this is what I accomplished when I was there. Choosing an international experience is your competitive advantage. It means that you took the initiative to go abroad. You identified specific skills, knowledge, and personal qualities valuable to potential employers. Here is your opportunity to step out of your comfort zone, out of your culture, and to succeed.